that in like the cheesy lame hackneyed way in which most I mean I'm very 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 grateful it is uh it's Friday it was a little bit of a, a rough week for this gal but we made it through we did it we we fought it to the other side uh so much has happened in the course of just five days everything from you know uh, a solar eclipse that happens they're like, oh, it's like once in a in a lifetime. It's like, didn't it happen in 2017? Okay. We got another one coming in, I believe, 2045. So that happened on Monday. Then I thought I was getting fired on Wednesday. Then that was resolved. Everything's okay. Um, you know, the jujitsu. I was doing great on Tuesday. Not so well yesterday. Just absolutely got demolished by everyone I rolled with, which was cool. Uh, good for the ego. Good for the... Uh, the soul, I guess. That's what I tell myself when I have... It wasn't even like a bad day. I was just like, damn, can I catch a break or anything on anyone? Uh, apparently not. But it was great. It is Friday, 813-90-BUBBA if you'd like to call in. Uh, I believe it was John Kustika who brought this up as an idea. Um, I know Joe the Supermark may call in. Sometimes he, he calls in. And by sometimes, I mean every time he calls in. Maybe if you want to give Joe a chance to talk, maybe we can do like an anti-snipe where you protect the like five minutes for Joe to just say his piece. I believe um, John Costica pitched this idea. I, you know, I, I hope I'm not getting him in trouble by saying that. But just in general, if you want to give an anti-snipe, which possibly none of you do. Um, I'm saying I'm not opposed to protecting time for money as well. So it's not just snipe, but also the anti-snipe. Um, big news, obviously, is that OJ is dead. And I know Seth mentioned this, and I kind of felt the same way because my first... Seth was the one that broke the news to me, and I believe Rhett was the one that broke the news to Seth. Uh, Usually I get notifications on all my shit when major things happen and I hadn't received anything. So I didn't I wasn't notified. But when I heard that OJ died and I think Seth and I had similar reactions, it was sadness. It was sadness. And not that OJ was a good person by any means. Um, Yes, he was found innocent in a court of law by a jury of his peers, I would say most people would would say the jury got it wrong. And maybe the jury purposely got it wrong because they were keeping score. And can we blame them? I know the NYPD, not NYPD, excuse me, the LAPD had a history of doing not very nice things to black people and getting away with it. 
And I think that this, it was just like the perfect storm of a situation where you clearly had a guy who was, you know, by any stretch of the imagination, in every direction, guilty as fuck. But the community was like, you know what? Y'all have been getting away by y'all. I mean, white people, the whiteies, the crackers, if I can even say that, probably can't, whatever. Y'all have been getting away with this stuff for a long time. We got one of our, our guys out on the deal, you know, and it was this perfect storm where it happened to be two white people that were murdered. He was a, 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 a well-esteemed, rich, famous black athlete. And I believe who is the I'm, I'm forgetting names here, but the police chief that was recorded saying something racist. So the defense kind of pitched as if it were all this evidence was planted against him because they hate blacks. Whatever the case may be, he got off. And I remember where I was. I think I was having this discussion with Babyface where it's like, you know where you were on 9-11, if you're, say, around my age. You know where you were on 9-11 when that happened, um, you know, COVID. And maybe I know COVID wasn't a day, a singular event, really. It was more like a period of time, but it's it's very clear in our minds, like the 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 hype and how scary that was at the beginning, or just uncertain, kind of exciting. I remember it was St. Patty's Day of 2020 is when I got furloughed from Horn Blasters. That was my last day working there, and it just seemed to be like a free for all. My best friend was getting on a cruise ship, and I I begged her not to go. She told me that her husband, as they were boarding the ship, was let go from his job. <laughs> They're getting on a ship. I was like, please don't do that. I have a feeling that someone might get sick. And not so much that you'll be sick, but more so like you'll be stuck at sea for two months. Begged or not, I said the NBA just fucking canceled the season. I was just furloughed from Horn Blasters. Matt Heller, um, CEO, President, whoever his title is, uh, founder of Horn Blasters, opened up the vending machine and was like, take whatever you want. He said this to all of the employees, just take whatever. So I remember taking like one thing and he's like, Anna, get in there. And I was like, all right. So I took like a bunch of shit. I remember that day. It was St. Patty's Day. And they told us it was at least two weeks to stop the spread. But they didn't know how long we were not going to see another fucking human being for. And I think I may have had, no joke, 10 candy bars. At least eight. At least eight. Because the only thing holding me back, at least at that point, wasn't necessarily my health. It was more just like aesthetic stuff, and I constantly had something on the on the roster of like, oh, a pool party here, club in here. I used to go out all the time, and it's hard to fit into you know your tight clothes when maybe you're a little bit bloated from all the shit you ate. So I was just kind of constantly there were the guardrails were always on, and then when I realized I wasn't going to see anybody and everything was closed down, guardrails came off, and I was just like, fuck it, I'm gonna just eat whatever the fuck I want, and it probably lasted four days. Or I just, I went absolutely buck wild. But anyways, obviously we all have our uh, own experience with that. Um, I made a joke during the show, but I'm like completely serious. The first time I saw, and I think it's pretty much the only time I saw Two Girls, One Cup, uh, where I was, who I was with, who showed it to me. uh, That was uh, traumatizing in a hilarious and disgusting way. And then um, obviously the reading of the OJ verdict. The, and where I was, I was probably in about third grade, perhaps. And my mom owned a dance studio for many, many years. And th- there were different different locations, but there's one that stands out to me because it was pretty much the, the, the epicenter of my life between the ages of, I don't know, fucking eight and 16 or something. Like your formative years. That's where I was really dancing hard, doing all the things. I would go there pretty much every day after school either to wait for my dad to pick me up, take classes myself, whatever the case may be. So I remember my mom would always give me maybe, uh, you know, two bucks to go get a candy bar and a, and a soda because that was my afternoon snack. I'm sure she regrets that now. Um, it, it, not that it, I mean, I'm fine. I, I turned out healthy and whatnot, but you have the potential to start some really bad habits when you do that every day. Nevertheless, we would go, I would go to this, um, convenience store that was in the same strip mall as my mom's dance studio. And the guy that owned it was a Chaldean man from Michigan. Cause that's where they all live. 
and his name was Sam. And I have a vivid memory of like, and I'd see Sam every every day, like Monday through Friday, pretty much every day. He was a friend of the family, sort of at that point, because my mom had been in business for you know quite some time, and he'd been there for quite some time. And my dad would go and talk to him about Middle East shit, because that's what people from you know the Middle East do. And even though my dad's not Middle Eastern, but lived in Israel for ten years, yada yada, you get the point. So I go down to uh, the corner store essentially, and Sam's there. And I remember he's like barely paying attention to me. He's just looking at this, you know, the little tiny square TV that like every convenience store or liquor store had just sitting there and the owner would just kind of sit and then you'd on a stool watching TV all day and then there'd be a customer coming. They'd deal with the customer back to watching TV. That was what Sam was doing. And I remember paying for like whatever, my Snickers and my my Coke or whatever I was getting that day. And he was like barely counting the coins and just staring at the screen. And they were reading the verdict. And I was watching the TV mostly just because he seemed very intrigued by it. So and and very and thought it was very compelling. So I was like, this must be big news. He's not even he's not even paying attention to the money. This is outrageous. So I remember just hearing. I don't even remember hearing not guilty. I just remember his reaction to it where he was like, what the fuck? You know, sort of a thing like this guy got off. It's crazy. You hear, I think it's Johnny Cochran like, yeah. And then um, Ron Goldman. And I don't know. the I don't know if it was his mother. Uh, Ron, not Ron. Gold, Ron Goldman's father. Excuse me. Um, just embracing the woman next to him, which may have been Ron's sister or mother or something. I can't quite remember. Uh, but I do remember that. And um, OJ kind of transformed. I I really wasn't familiar with him before that, obviously, because I was fucking eight. But uh, he transformed, at least in my mind, from a criminal that got off to almost like this oddly beloved. Like he fucking got away with it. Like he's it's it's he's almost like endearing. And I remember and I hate admitting this, but I also don't hate admitting this. But like. I remember when I was on on the Bumbles, there was a man that came up on the Bumbles and the first picture that he had was with him and OJ. And just from that picture alone, I decided to swipe right. I was like, this guy is awesome. He's got a sense of humor. He's his first picture. He's putting out that he ran into OJ and he's excited about it. And we ended up going on one date, just one date. Certainly was not a good match, but it was a uh, it was it was one date. But it, it, that's thanks to OJ because I remember thinking, well, this guy's got a sense of humor; he could probably take a joke. That would be fun. So, you know, I think that a lot of us are obviously surprised and a little sad that OJ is gone. And I don't know why sometimes we root for the villain, or at least I'm trying to think like, why would I? He's clear, clearly a homicidal uh, maniac, a violent man with some really bad behaviors. And I didn't really know much about his upbringing. I didn't know that his dad was a closeted gay man who died from AIDS and was a drag queen. And I'm thinking like, OK, to be a drag queen today is, I guess, kind of hip and cool. And sometimes you get to tell stories to kids or whatever, or you, or you work at Hamburger Mary's and... You know, you have a bunch of other gay dudes and a bunch of ladies. Ladies love the drag brunch. I know I did. I've been a few times. It's fun. It's it's a good time. Uh, it, it's cool now. It probably wasn't cool like in the 50s or whenever OJ was growing up. Um, probably wasn't cool then. I mean, again, they were in San Francisco and I'm sure San Francisco was more liberal than than most but you got to think during that time it it probably wasn't okay especially if your father you know your dad if it's just some random guy whatever or maybe your uncle willie but if it's your dad maybe maybe that fucks you up a little bit and then i learned that he had rickets which it's funny that he became a professional athlete because i don't know i mean i guess the the rickets the the damage caused is not Permanent, I guess, if you end up getting enough vitamin D later on. Um, 
but or maybe it is. And despite that, he still became one of the one of the greatest football players of all time. I don't know. Maybe that's not a correct assessment, but it seems like he still holds some records. I know he was a stellar athlete, good looking guy, played for USC in high in a college. Excuse me. Got the Heisman Award, the Heisman Trophy, which I know is a very coveted award to be won. I think there's only one a year. So that's pretty cool. Good for him. Plays for the Buffalo Bills, yada, yada. Gets involved in Hollywood. Befriends the Kardashians before they became the Kardashians. And, uh, you know, marries two beautiful women, it seems. One uh, one which was a, a lovely black lady and then starts cheating on her with Nicole. Divorces her. Uh, marries Nicole. It's funny. I, I, I want to hear from the first wife, who was probably really upset. When she found out her husband was cheating on her um, with a hot waitress, and I believe it was Beverly Hills. I think that's where they met. He met Nicole, who's waitressing there in 1977, I believe. And um, you find out that he's cheating on you with a white woman. Uh, that probably didn't sit well. They had two children together, him and his first wife. I think her name was like Marquette or something. And I believe their youngest child died in a drowning incident in their pool so that again will fuck you up and so i i would love to hear from the first wife if she's still alive you know she was probably really upset when she found out that her husband was cheating on her and left her for another woman especially a white woman and then a few more years down the road you go well thank god because that could have ended really poorly for me I'm glad that that, that's what you get, bitch. You get almost decapitated, bitch. So I'm not saying that's what she said. Maybe she was sympathetic to the cause. But you got to think, like, if I was Marquette, I I, I know her name started with an M. I'm kind of making it up because I can't quite remember exactly what it was. But you got to think if you were her and you find out that you know, your husband leaves you for some other probably hotter chick, younger chick. You're devastated. This bitch broke up the family. Your husband left you for something that he, you know, in his mind was a better option for him. Maybe she was a bitch. Maybe she was a nightmare. I don't know anything about their relationship. But let's just assume that, you know, he's a philanderer. He leaves the family. You've already suffered the death of a child. Now you have the the death of the family unit. And you you see that this other chick is like some fucking floozy in Beverly Hills who stole your husband away. You're just fucking mad. You're just like this. And then, you know, they get married. They have two children together. It looks like they have the perfect life. Everything just looks amazing. Um... And then that bitch gets murdered and you're like, whoa, not going to act kind of happy about that. But bitch, you know, she probably maybe felt bad about the Ron Goldman thing because, you know, that that guy didn't have nothing to do with anything. He just met Nicole like six weeks before. How unfortunate would that be? You know, I feel like I was almost Ron Goldman, to be honest with you, because when my old former roommate, God bless her, was dating someone who ended up being a murderer. There were times when I was around and he was acting kind of crazy and thankfully police stepped in and everything ended up being a okay. but I would have been like the and roommate. It would have been like estranged lovers, murdered, whatever, and roommate. That I would have been an absolute afterthought, as was Ron Goldman. Because people always talk about, you know, Nicole Simpson's family, and Nicole, 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 the wife, the wife. I feel like Ron Goldman is is somewhat overlooked oftentimes, and I would have been the Ron Goldman, which makes me very sad to think about. But I don't know why sometimes I vote, I root for the villain. It just seems like when someone is just winning especially when they shouldn't or they don't deserve it at a certain point there's like a threshold where i'm just like i just hope they go all the way and oj went all the way i mean yeah he went to fucking prison for nine years for some shit that he did and he should have been there obviously but he got away with murder and actually wrote a book about it what was it called if i did it (laughs) i mean unreal just the um 
just how bold and brazen and just the what's the what's the word I'm um, looking for the um, oh no my mind I'm turning into Joe Biden the hubris that's the word the hubris you have to have to be like yeah well I got off and I'm just gonna write a book you know what we should that should be a class assignment I'm gonna buy that book this weekend if I did it a memoir of what I maybe did but didn't do um but that's that's just kind of the makeup of our system, of our justice system. And to be honest with you, I'm almost perfectly okay with that because no system is perfect, right? No system is perfect. In the United States of America, you are innocent until proven guilty. The onus of evidence is is on the prosecution to prove guilt, you know? You are presumed innocence unless there are unless there's evidence supporting otherwise. So, unfortunately, you have a few slip through the cracks, and OJ slipped through the cracks. But it's, like, not even because they missed evidence. Like, everything was in place. It was more just the, the temperature, the cultural temperature at the time was ripe for a this one's for us, if you will. A this one is for us, and fuck you. You know, which really sucks when you're, uh, you know, the family of Nicole Simpson and or Ron Goldman, because you're just like, dude, why did I have to be the example of this? Now there's a murderer on the loose. Um, And it was weird because after he got off, he again became a, a celebrity, but for a completely different reason. I knew that he was a football player, but I didn't know like how I never knew him as a football player. I just knew that he did play football and that was it. I didn't know that he was a an, a superstar football player. I didn't know that he was an actor at the time. So to me, he's always the murderer. But now it's like he's like this beloved murderer. Kind of like Cosby as far as like um you know, the 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 sexual assault rape allegations. I feel like if you saw Cosby in the street, you'd just be like, "Oh, can I take a picture? I'd love to take a picture." Cuz you 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 just embody at least with Cosby, you embody, you know, the Huxtable. Was it the Huxtables? I think that's what, right. The the Cosby family, the Cosby show. Excuse me. I used to watch, you know, the whole like Rudy. Yeah, I would watch that show sometimes. It was a good one. And he seemed to be just like the all American dad, um, a doctor. He was like a good actor. He's kind of funny, not too funny, kind of subdued. Didn't seem like a predator at all. Wasn't creepy. Meanwhile, he was just like raping people left and right. And I guess those are the best criminals because you just don't expect it just seems so antithetical to their character. But, you know, what happens. So with OJ, I was just at a certain point, you just hit a threshold and you, you go, man, I'm just rooting for this guy to make it to the end. And he did. He made it to the end. And when the White House press secretary was asked about this uh, Simpsons death she's like yeah our thoughts and prayers are with his his family because it's really hard time for them I'm like this guy is a fucking he murdered people but he was you know he was a DEI hire so we're happy for him but to be honest like I said I don't know why I was rooting for him too I loved his little Twitter videos where he was what was he telling people during the pandemic? Like, just stay calm. You'll be fine. Like, really sage advice. Keep active. Like, just kind of this beloved old murderer man. He was very charming. And I know that that got him out of a lot of trouble, even though he was a murderer. All right. Let's see who wants to join us. Hello. Who's this? Uh, Homo, Joe the Supermark. Joe the Supermark. What's going on? Sorry, I have not been paying attention to any of the monies, but there is none. So we're good. Go ahead, Joe. What's going on? Hey, Jay Warren. So I was, I do have a comment on your topic currently, but first I need to ask you, did you see the new screen that you're on since like towards the I end did, of the I did, yeah. Show? That's a Macho Man special. It's it's awesome. It's beautiful. Isn't it? It's like purple and blue is just together and I'm just high and I'm just rolling with it and it's nice. But yeah. I have a question. La- yeah. Last week and this week, there's a story on the screen that's just sitting there. This it one? Says, Non-binary Canadians see yeah. public funding for surgery to create vagina while preserving penis. Is that a story about Tampa Terry? Oh, shots fired. Snipe with a 1999 Mike Thurman. Guys, sorry, Joe. Guys, let him talk a little bit. He has no one to talk to, and they stole his Keurig. Um, This non-binary Canadian story, um, 
I don't believe is about Tampa Terry. I can't rule it out. I know Bubba wanted to talk about it, and he still may do that next week because it's kind of a evergreen story. But it makes perfect sense to me because someone who identifies as non-binary, well, maybe they want both parts, I suppose. You'd think you'd want no parts um, if you're not. Well, maybe not. Maybe I would think that you would want to go full Ken doll where all you have is pretty much like a butthole. And a, and a hold pee out of, perhaps. But this this guy wanted a, a vaginoplasty, but while also keeping a penis, which uh, I am all for. I think that that is a great idea. I would like to see what that looks like. And at that point, you really have to have, you have to have a surgeon, but you have to have like a Picasso. You have to have an artist because this sort of thing, as far as I know, maybe has never been done before. Like vaginoplasty, sure. Maria Guatemala, let Joe talk. $20. The anti-snipe. Bright Farm, Johns Island, 1999. Thank you. God bless. Uh, Joe, I believe Maria has secured at least... Five minutes, I'll say I'll say five minutes of airtime. So if you would like to call back, there's someone on hold. I will get to it in just one moment. But Joe, uh, Maria has has given you the anti-snipe. So we'll give you at least five minutes of talk time. I would I would love to see the penis with a uh, vaginoplasty. I would like to see what that looks like. Because like I said before, that's not something that I have seen before and i support anybody cutting up their body in any which way that they so desire if that helps them i wonder how that would help them well i guess if you identify as a non-binary person to your core you want to go down and and just be like i'm every i'm i'm it all i got the booty hole i got a penis i got breasts and facial hair and a vagina because I am all genders at once. Um, I still wake up and am very confused by the the elevation and escalation of the transgender movement. I wonder if all of these people have just been suffering in silence for decades. Just begging to come out of whatever sort of body has constrained them their whole lives or if this is just something new and slightly kind of enhanced and made up because these kids are regarded and celebrated as as heroes as representatives of the trans community i i hate to say it, i still think it's like a fake issue i still think it's a it's a money laundering storefront for us to a bait and switch, if you will, so that we focus on something that's actually not really a thing. I'm not suggesting it doesn't exist. I'm just suggesting that it maybe isn't such a a big deal as we are making it out to be. So the more that we can get focus on this issue that really doesn't move the needle of the country in any which way because the the population of people who are actually trans is just so small um and i don't i still don't quite understand like what they're fighting for most people who are decent people even if you look like a fucking freak and i'm not saying that that's just transgender but anybody like if you look fucking like a weirdo most people just leave you alone They'll just leave you alone because they're probably afraid of you. They're just like, I can't figure it out. And I I get annoyed with myself for many reasons. But one of the reasons I get annoyed with myself, and I think other people have a similar experience, is when you are walking down the street just minding your own business, and then you just see something that, like, you're, like, you, I hate to say that, you, like, seize up, like, the kid that was fucking hit in the face you you're like what the fuck you and you have an extended stare or maybe a double take so it's very obvious what you're doing but you you can't help it 
it's an involuntary reaction when you see something that doesn't add up. This happened to me a lot when I was in Denver. Even though I was in Denver only for a few days, maybe five days, I saw a lot of things that just don't usually pair together, like tits and a beard. And you go, huh, I like your brain like needs to figure it out because we're used to just a certain set of patterns, certain set of expectations when we see someone with a nice round booty that's maybe short with long hair. And then they turn around and they got like they look like an imam. Your brain goes, whoa, like, whoa, like you're just, you know, you glitch and you freeze up and you stare because your brain is trying to figure it out. It's not because I'm fucking transphobic. Actually, I think that, that that might be a fair assessment for me. Sometimes I do get scared. I go, I don't know. This person maybe looks unstable. But, I mean, I'm not going to make it obvious you know, in terms of the running away portion. But in terms of the trying to figure it out portion, like, don't get mad at me because I, I stared. Stares aren't illegal, okay? Staring should not be considered bullying. If I'm not saying anything or really doing anything, I mean, I can't. I, now I can't look at people for too long. I mean, that happens all the time. I, I might stare at you because you're too fat or too thin or you're really tall or like really short or something. But if you're not, if your appearance is just not making sense to me, I maybe have just uh, at least give you a little peripheral action where I'm like trying to just, just trying to figure it out. And I think a lot of people have that experience where you're just like, was that, um, was that a, a this to a that or a that to a this? Or is that just someone who has PCOS? I don't know. I don't know, but my brain is trying to figure it out. So I think a lot of people have that experience. Um, as far as what people do with their bodies, I mean, go ahead. Even with the kids. I mean, do I really care? No. Do I think it's a good idea? Probably not. You probably don't want to give estrogen blockers to a, a developing prepubescent boy uh you probably don't want to give a, a young girl a double mastectomy when she's for her bat mitzvah oh i'm sorry now bar mitzvah or whatever the fuck um yeah that's that's probably not a good idea but also i mean you could circumcise your kids right and, and some Places in the United States, maybe in Dearborn, Michigan, I know they do some form of like a clitorectomy. That is a popular procedure in some sects of of Islam. So if you're allowed to do those things to your children, should you uh, be allowed to give them estrogen blockers and puberty blockers? I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, I'm just like, whatever, like let let people do what they want to do. I, I'm just, I, maybe I'm, maybe, maybe th- I know it's, here's the thing. It's like, I know it's not a good idea, but I think people have the right to do and to do dumb things and, and raise their children the way that they see fit. That's what I think. Even though I think it's a horrible idea. I don't think it's good for the mentals and the chickens, but maybe if you just kind of open the floodgates and you go, let it eat, do what you want. It's going to get worse before it gets better. And then people are forced to look at the reality and go, this is harming our children. We probably shouldn't do this. But at least they can come to that conclusion on their own instead of you forcing them or getting in their way. Is it considered child abuse? I don't know. I mean, define abuse, I guess. Is the child on board? Does it matter if the child's on board? Would you consider forcing your child to get a hepatitis vaccination series? Child abuse when the child is screaming and crying, doesn't want to go? Or, you know, my parents made me and my sister get braces. I was cool with it because I'm, I'm down with straight teeth. My sister, not so much a fan. My sister had a, a littler mouth than me, smaller mouth than me. She had to get an expander. And my dad would have to, like, widen the expander and, it, like... From the outside point of view, I remember seeing this and being like, is this child abuse? Um, But the orthodontist was like, this is what we need to do. Also, my sister was a bit dramatic, so you have to kind of take that into consideration as well. Um, But, like, how do you define abuse? Sometimes it's pretty obvious. Like, okay, maybe don't, like, close fist punch your kid in the face when they're a toddler. That seems obvious. But then it's like getting their ear pierced when they're an infant. Is that considered child abuse? Because I've seen a lot of those videos. The kids don't look happy about it. They certainly don't look at They cry a lot. And sometimes the parents cry too because they feel bad because they're abusing their kids by getting them their ears pierced. Um, so it is it is hard to define is how I feel. And usually I just go, I'm going to stay out of it. I think it's a bad idea, but I think that you have the right to do 
and perform bad ideas on your kids? Because I'm sure you don't want to be, if you have children, I do not, but I assume that you probably don't want other people telling you what to do with your children or how to raise them or how to deal with their conditions, problems, etc. So I would say the same thing. Like, you pro- you know, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your kid. You want to make them, you know, turn Freddie into Sally. That's, you know, that's your prerogative. Uh, go ahead and do it. I, I, w- I wouldn't allow it if I was a parent. I don't think it's, I don't think it's probably a good idea. Probably not going to help the kid out. But also, like, uh, I don't fucking care. All right. Let's take some calls. Hello, who's this? Hi. I, I, I just want to... Just oh. say something about your program. Um, sorry, uh, Macho Man. I hope I didn't blow the horn in your face. I just got your message, but I will lay off the horn. Um, yeah, is this Charlie? Can you hear me? Yeah, you're probably gonna yell at me, you're calling at me ugly or something. What's going on? I'm not gonna yell at you, but I'm 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 gonna ask you a question. Mm. All right. So you're you're rambling on and on and on and on and on, but you're not making any sense. What is your point? Um. Well, I'm just I'm just discussing ideas, Charlie. If, if it upsets you, you can just just not listen to me, I suppose. Well, no, I'm, it, it does not upset <clears throat> me. I'm calling into your program, but you're yeah. just rambling on. What that's that's kind point? of the that's kind of the premise of the program. Is I just I ramble on my ideas for a while. I kind of just think out loud. Yeah, I don't have no, anyone to talk yeah, to, Charlie, except for you, and you're no help because you fucking suck. So what do you expect me to do? So you have to use vulgar language to describe me? Yeah, I think it's necessary. So don't well, I'm going to give you the best advice for broadcasting. <laughs> Never use vulgar language. When you use vulgar language that basically says you're inarticulate. You you have a limited oh. vocabulary. Never No, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you great advice. Oh, don't ever you. use like the F word, the B word. Really? Cuz we had to dump you a few days ago when when you started swearing. So I did. Now you know what you're right. You're right. No, but I'm oh. just telling you. You, you know, it will end there. Words. I just, oh, you're right. From Charlie. Now I got a boner. Um, hello, who's this? On home with Joe. Oh, Park, locked in for at least five solid minutes, Joe. What's going on? I have to thank Maria so much. This is one of the greatest things anybody's ever done for me. Oh. I, I, I'm so excited for her to go on her first cruise. And that's going to be amazing. And, and I know that all of her hopes and dreams are going to be exceeded by what happens on that cruise. And she gets some time out from work and she gets to see the world. And mm-hmm. it's just going to be phenomenal. So I know this cruise talk was going on this week and none of y'all have ever been on a cruise and neither have I. So that's kind of strange that nobody's been on a cruise before, but whatever. That's not even why I called the talk. I was going to make a comment back. See, because it's funny how Charlie says that you ramble on and yeah. really have nothing to say because all of your ramblings literally pop different thoughts and ideas off in my head. So when you were talking about Cosby and you were talking about the villain, yeah. that made me think about the underdog. Maybe you think of the villain as the underdog and you root for the underdog. Um, or maybe well, I'll let you go. Yeah, no, go ahead. I, I had another thought. Sure. That, you know, when you're talking about OJ and you're talking about Cosby, we're talking about a certain color here. Is Black. Does have anything to do with it? Uh, you mean why I'm rooting for them? Yeah, would you root for a John Wayne Gacy or would you root for uh, Edward R. Murrow? I know he's not a murderer, but... I, uh, I yeah, don't know who those people there. are. I, I think at a certain point, I just... I just Because I the way that life is supposed to work is that there are consequences for your actions. That essentially, um, the cat... The, what do they call it? The... the, the, the Cocks come home to roost. Whatever the fuck the saying is where one day you'll get your day. One day, if you're a bad person, one day you're going to there you're going to be shown that you're gonna have a downfall. You know, that's what we're told. The story is that, you know, you're never gonna get away with it forever. And most of the time that's true. Most of the time you you don't get away with it forever and that consequences do come into play you fuck over the wrong person and you will experience a downfall or you'll get what you deserve sort of a thing but oj really never did and so at a certain point you're just like fuck he's gonna win the race he's gonna make it through the game of frogger without ever getting hit by a car and it's it's weird it's like 
it's like a like a volley. You know, you ever play like racquetball or tennis or something or 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 whatever and or hot potato. The longer you go, the more exciting the game becomes because you have more to lose. You're like, man, we we've gone this far without the the ball dropping or without the volley, you know, um, stopping. That we just want to keep it going. And I feel like that's what I felt about OJ is that like he never really got what he deserved. And you think at some point he is. He never really did. Like, yeah, he he went to prison for nine years for a, a separate crime. But the motherfucker was writing books about if I did it when he clearly did it. And he got away with it completely. And I think even in prison, he was pretty popular. Like people were like he was he was a popular guy in prison because he was just such a high profile criminal. He's got that smile. That smile is so nice. Yeah, he's got a million dollar smile. <clears throat> Even when you were just talking there, you mentioned one word volley, and it made me think about volleyball, how that was created in Holyoke, Massachusetts. Oh, I bet you never knew that. I, I didn't know that. I'm not a, a big volleyball aficionado, but now I will forever remember that factoid. So thank you very much, Joe. But you taught me something a couple things this week that I never knew. Like when you first took my call, you had mentioned Charlie having a boner or something. I never knew that you never knew what a boner was. And when you yeah. said, Home on to know what a boner is i thought that was hilarious you told me what me. goy is yeah i never knew, yeah. what, I never knew what goy is and, and it reminded me of how much when you introduced me to challah bread or ha bread oh please don't awesome call it challah is. bread that's the oh, most well, that's the most goy thing anyone could say and i've seen this a few times on social media I'm where people are like oh you got to have it with the challah bread um <laughs> oh oh dear you've been super Sniped, override, ninety nine, ninety nine. Joe, we have to part ways because we just, I just made a hundred bucks, God bro. Bless. God bless. God bless. Um, I'm pretty sure Macho Man's out of the danger zone, but I'm gonna just give you like a boop boop. Uh, Mike Thurman, thank you very much. I don't, I don't want to burn his fingers off because I know that he is currently soldering right now. Or maybe he finished, but I just want to make sure that he's okay. So that's why you're not getting the horn. But I see your your X5 uh, snipe override, and I appreciate it. Ninety nine ninety nine from Mike Thurman. Uh, hello, who's this? Hey, it's Charlie. Well, at least you've identified yourself. Everyone is telling me to hang up on you, Charlie. Do you have anything that you can say that maybe would make you a bit more likable to the people that are listening to the show? Or do you just always have to be so disagreeable? And mean. Um, I'm watching your show right now. I think you've got you're, you've got a great presence on, on online. You're very attractive, but why why aren't you presenting that when you're with Bubba or a Clem? I'm not gonna. Why why, why why don't you have a strong voice on Clem's show? Um, it's just a different dynamic, Charlie. I don't know what to tell you. It's just uh, it's a different dynamic. I play a different role. And, um, you know, a lot of the, the contents of the main show are things that I don't really, they're, they're not really my power alley. So I kind of just lay low and, until something comes up where I feel like I can give um, the proper amount of contribution. That's all. Now, you threw a couple of zingers in earlier, and I liked them, and nobody acknowledged it, but I, I laughed. I don't remember specifically, but I like your show. I wish your personality shined on his show, um, I know you got you know, there's like five, four or five people. You're in the background. I actually like you. So oh. I know you're thinking, Charlie, what's your zinger? What are you going to throw me? I'm not going to throw anything at you. So let's leave it at that. Cool. All right. That Have all? a good day. Oh, sweet. Fuck. Damn. That's it. Bye. Damn, bye. All right. Shit. Um, wow. I'm like shook. You know, when you're just like on guard waiting for someone to punch you in the face and they just are like, Have a great day. And you're just like, oh, Sweet. Awesome. More of that, Charlie. Less of, you know, the Charlie that we've we've come to know on the main show. So, appreciate you. Have a great weekend. Um, there are a few other things I would like to discuss besides O.J. Simpson, although O.J. fascinates me. And again, more so because I've, I've been rooting for him this whole time. I just wanted him to make it to the end of the game. Make it to the end of the game without getting sniped, and the motherfucker did. He did it. Not only did he do it, motherfucker was in the, the, the social presence and such a cultural icon for so long that he became like this beloved figure even after he murdered those people was found to be innocent even though everybody knew that he was guilty and even when he died like just all the coverage yesterday was 
there are a few people like Caitlyn Jenner that said, you know, good riddance or whatever. But most people were empathetic, sympathetic, sorry that OJ died because he was just kind of like this lovable monster, you know? And I'm sure that that happens with a lot of people. They're, they're pieces of shit. Well, especially with OJ because he was like a star athlete, good looking guy, million dollar smile, was very charismatic, all of those things. <clears throat> so he was kind of able to curry favor with 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 the people, but nevertheless, there's a. I feel like a lot of times you just it's hard to hate on people as they get older and more decrepit and just you know I'm trying to think of other examples of people that they were horrible people, but like you, even when you see like these Nazis that show up in the middle of Ohio and now they're in their nineties. And it's like, we're going to try this guy because, you you know, he killed a bunch of people, killed a bunch of Jews. And, and it is horrible. But looking at this man, you're like, how could this little old man do such, you know, he's just, he's harmless. He can't. But you have to remember, like, this guy's a fucking monster. And so it was hard for me to do that with OJ after a certain point. His motherfucker was just having a good time golfing. Um, I think he was, like, spraying down his money. He's like, be safe out there. I feel like there was something really ironic. He was giving people like health advice or something along the lines of, or legal advice, like make sure you don't steal, make sure you, whatever the case may be, like giving people um, like a moral guidance, which is hilarious and awesome. And when someone is giving you moral guidance and they themselves are a uh, murderous piece of shit, you just gotta, you just gotta smile and laugh and go, Oh, OJ. Oh, OJ, you sweet, sweet man. How could you do this? You didn't mean it, right? You didn't do it again. You didn't do it again. And then I want to meet like all the women that fucked OJ after the Nicole Brown, or sorry, it was Nicole Brown, so I'm sorry. Um, after that incident, like all the white women he probably plowed through after he was a free man. Like, what was going through their mind, I wonder? Because I know women sometimes are, are very twisted. We are attracted by we, I mean, not necessarily me, but also sometimes me. Women are attracted to men that often show signs or characteristics of having uh, what they call the dark triad of characteristics. I believe it is like Machiavellianism narcissism and psychopathy so three thing three of these things these not great qualities to have especially in combination with one another and women are very attracted to these traits because these men seem to be very assertive oftentimes they're very successful i know people who are i'm not throwing dan under the bus i'm just saying these are the facts surgeons and ceos i think scar score very high on the dark triad oftentimes there are qualities that make you a good leader um because you can't be worrying about like what if this what if that if you're a president, for example, and you have to be decisive about sending people to war, knowing full well that they may, might die, not a lot of people are able to handle those types of decisions. <clears throat> so oftentimes people that have a score high on the dark triad are often very good leaders, um, presidents, CEOs, surgeons, people who have to act quickly, decisively, assertively. So, And then there's a lot of women who date prisoners while they're in prison you know they're both on the bumbles and he's in prison and they come and visit visit them even though they've been convicted of maybe rape or murder or whatever women are kind of twisted in that way sometimes not all of us not all of us not me but oftentimes that's what happens so i wonder like how much pussy oj got after that and i'm sure he got a lot and it's not like you oj missed your radar you know, because there's like if you were to be like who uh, the Roethlisberger guy, like I might not know who the fuck that is, but everybody knows who OJ is. Nobody missed that. Nobody missed that. Um, I believe his daughter lives in St. Pete or did. Um, I know people that like dated her, which might be a bit scary to think that OJ could possibly be your father-in-law. Um, so that was uh that was a risk that someone I knew personally took um a guy around town he was actually running for mayor i think at one point in st pete uh was dating sydney simpson i was like that's a flex that's a flex that you made it out alive that you were not murdered by your potential father-in-law so uh yeah i think i'm it's a little sad that oj's gone because he became such a beloved uh murderous 
piece of shit, you know, just watching the 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 videos on Twitter, just laughing, just because you know he's telling people how to act right, be respectful. Meanwhile, he decapitated his ex-wife. Wild stuff. Hello, who's this? Anna, the fat pig. Oh, fat pig! Welcome to the show. Love your name. Hey, uh, I just wanted to run it by you. You were talking about the OJ thing. Have you watched the new Alex Jones documentary? I have not. No. Okay, you want to talk about correlation to cases? Wow. That, I mean, because he's not going to pay anybody the same way that OJ didn't pay the Goldman's and filed for bankruptcy. Um, yeah, if you, if you watch it, there's a lot of correlation. You want to talk about a piece of shit who got away with some stuff. You're, talking, you're saying okay. Alex Jones was a piece of shit that got away with stuff. Oh, yeah, like when you, because at first I, I didn't, I was buying into it on his side, but once they go through it in the trial and everything, apparently all that he was doing was he didn't even believe his own conspiracy theories. He was just intentionally lying to push his dick pills and his Yeah, you're saying he was just like a shit. grifter um, so that, it, yeah, yeah, he like could push his, his supplements or whatever. Yeah, and I mean, I would definitely watch the documentary. It's very interesting because the beginning of it, you kind of root for him like wow these people really fucked with him but this is the the, the the did we watch the trailer for this this is the sandy hook kind of thing right yeah the, it's an hbo doc yeah you'll watch okay i'll, I'll try to watch it this weekend a weeks ago but yeah uh yeah i used to like that guy but honestly uh <laughs> i think anybody who supports him above him might want to reconsider having him on the show because it seems like everything he touches turns to shit yeah um, yeah, I, I, I try to keep any- in mind that whenever I watch a documentary that there's obviously going to be a spin that whoever created the documentary is trying to make me see through their eyes or their agenda or their narrative. But it, it could very well be all true. I, I don't know. But I do just try to keep that in mind at the back of my head when I'm watching anything, even if it's about things I do, vegetarianism, veganism, whatever the case may be. I always try to be like, all right, they're trying to convince me of something through their story. So absolutely. You know. but that's what I really liked about this particular documentary is for the first half of the documentary, I was like, fuck these people are going after them like a witch hunt. And yeah. I was like, for Alex Jones. But right. Then once they bring the other shit out, I was still like, it's just you kind of slowly fade from it and they bring it in and then all the harassment and everything. And, and it'll really turn you around once you watch it. Like people who support him are basically the scum of the earth now i mean he's a fucking piece of shit i mean okay it sounds know, like you've I mean, had like a, a pretty hard change of heart when it comes to alex know, jones what i'm saying I, i've been affected many ways by many different documentaries and i am kind of a documentary whore what what other ones that did change your perspective or your opinion on something doesn't have to be uh, i watched that politically documentary that one about kardashian the bag okay it's called like the bag or something about OJ. Okay. Like, play all the audio recordings and mm-hmm. everything, and you know, because I always knew that he was guilty. Mm-hmm. But when they go through that and Robert Kardashian going and picking up that bag and what was supposed to be in the bag, and it, he's on camera putting it into his trunk and leaving and stuff. What was in the bag? Uh, well, nobody knows. But he put a duffel bag in his trunk when they were doing the police raid, and he drove off. And, and they, nobody they found the bag. No, the bag was never found. Okay. Mm. And Robert Kardashian died, so mm. it was kind of a mystery. But that was an interesting documentary as well. Uh, I did watch like a six-part OJ thing probably like seven or eight years ago. I can't remember if they talked about the bag, but I'll probably dive into some, some OJ uh content this weekend just because it, just an absolutely insane life that he led right everything from his sports career to the murders to his family life um everything oh yeah and if you ever need, uh if you ever need suggestions on documentaries i'm your man i will hit you up for sure fat pig thank you so much i'll tell you one do you like one and done or do you like series or I, i'm i have no preference if you well, I like a lot of cult documentaries. One that I'll tell you came out a long time ago on Netflix is called Wild Wild Country. That's really good. I checked that out. Wild Wild kind of what? Briefly break it down. It's it's a cult documentary. They were out in the uh, shit. I think in Montana. Or some shit. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, it was just this crazy cult with this Indian dude. Um, and now the actual property I think is owned by like. Uh, 
what they call like a new age Christian cult or something, but it's 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 very bizarre, very riveting. I would check it out, but uh yeah, uh I definitely start with that uh Alex Jones documentary though on HBO. Okay, it's I'll definitely like I'll try to check that out this weekend. I should have some time. Um, one of my favorite ones on Netflix that I saw maybe in the last five years was called Wormwood. It's really fucking depressing, but it, I, I've, it was one of my favorite ones I've ever seen. It's a six-part deal if you're interested in MK Ultra, CIA, drug-induced murders. I haven't seen that, but I will definitely... Yeah, uh, it's a good it one. The other good one on Netflix, too, that's a one-shot Willie is uh, Tread. Have you seen that one? No. Uh-uh. But it's it's referring to like tank treads. It's about this crazy guy who uh, spent years uh, like solidifying a piece of machinery like a bulldozer yeah. into a fucking tank, and then he bulldozes the whole town and shoots it up. And oh, it was overshadowed happy ending. because yeah. it happened like the same day that Ronald Reagan died, so nobody heard about it. Oh, well, that's good timing. Do you think that that's just serendipitous, or obviously not by design? It was just kind of uh, well, like- it feeds into the conspiracy. <clears throat> okay, that's why I enjoyed it. Oh okay, well, I'll have to check Tread out and the Alex Jones one out for sure. So thank you for the suggestions, Fat Pig. I appreciate you. Absolutely. God bless you. God bless, God bless you. Maria, and God bless Joe the Supermarket. God bless America. Thank you for calling in. Hello, who's this? It's uh, South Tampa. South Tampa. What's going on? Hey, um, that Wild Wild Country one is actually a really good doc because it talks about the first, um, they were trying to get, they were trying to get control of the, uh, uh, of the political system in this little town, and okay. they started uh, trying to like give people, I think, listeria at a uh, salad bar. It got a whole bunch of people sick. It was oh like shit! Time. This is the Indian one he was talking about, Native American yeah. or whatever. Okay. Yeah. It's it's. Was this kind of like the Tuskegee sy- syphilis time. experiment that they did on uh, the blacks? It's it's well, I mean, I guess, but this is more like uh, they just wanted people to not. They wanted people to be sick on the election day, so they couldn't go vote. Oh, okay, okay. I, I didn't know what, what really the premise was, other than they're making Indians sick. So, okay. Man, yeah, haven't no, those people suffered enough? Seriously, what the fuck? What year was that, by the way? Well, we're talking about Indian, as in like uh, the guys, uh, 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 like from from the Golden Triangle, not from uh, 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 Oklahoma. The Golden so, Triangle. And, and, like you know, uh, in in the in the country of India. Oh, you could India. just say dot not feather, and that would hey, solve all I the confusion. Mean, <laughs> Sarah nine ninety nine. Thank back. you. Sorry, go ahead. I said if we could have that ten seconds back. Yeah, no, it's 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 a good doc. Um, uh, I was just going to say that that assassin game. My boss, I was talking with her, and she's like, "Yeah, we had a bunch of cops with guns drawn this morning." So uh, her kid was playing the assassin game and uh she looked outside and saw that the uh one of their friends was like waiting in the bushes with his like gun and of yeah. course a a, a a neighbor right who was like this is in baltimore by the way yeah you can tell it's not in baltimore city or the kid would have been dead because he would have had a gun sure 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 and the cops would have shot him so it's in the burbs and uh yeah they they just pull up and um uh, he he has a he has a, a black squirt gun and the the tip of course isn't painted orange so yeah that's I mean, scary shit you know I know Jay insane. was saying that it was no big deal but uh, again if it's a super soaker fine you're like okay this is obviously not a real gun but when they're rolling around with stuff even if it did have a tip you can't maybe see it wherever that's just freaky where a hooded person is hanging outside your house and pointing a, what. It looks to be a, a weapon at your face. Like, that's scary shit. That's scary hey, shit. In, in Baltimore, you're going to go to prison for shooting that kid. Here, the jury will be out for about 15 minutes, and you'll be going home today. Yeah, yeah. So, um... All right, hey. Yep. Oh, have a great weekend. Oh, you too. Thanks, South Tampa. Yeah. Appreciate you. God bless. Um, Moving on to this topic, which I thought was an interesting one. There is a situation where a teenage son has asked his mother to dress more modestly because his friends, quote, think I'm hot. Um, Let's see if I can move this over to this screen right here, and we can all be the judge of whether this woman is attractive or not. Uh, First, got to go through the uh, TurboTax, 
Willie. So apologize for that. I don't know if we necessarily need sound. We kind of just want to see if the chick is hot and what she is all about. Let's see. Come on, man. Oh, one of two. Great. They're giving me two pre-roll willies. That's okay. We don't want grandma to get sick. Not quite. Okay. This is a dental. Aspen Dental. You get $500 off, folks. Off what? I don't fucking know. But hopefully we can get a little bit of... Okay. Okay. This is... this. Oh, perfect. So this video has nothing to do with the actual story I'm trying to cover, which is nice. Maybe this is... Maybe this is the mom. I'm not quite sure. I think they're just showing me pictures of hot MILFs, which is fine. Um, this woman apparently is taken to the internet asking a parent forum for some answers or at least some guidance. She goes, I'm facing a bit of a dilemma and could really use some advice. My teenage son, 12 going on 13, has been urging me to stop wearing makeup and dress in a more, quote, frumpy way because he finds it embarrassing that his friends think I'm attractive. I want to respect his feelings, but at the same time, I don't want to compromise my own sense of self. It's hard to really get a gauge on what this woman is doing because maybe she's just a pretty lady. Maybe she's just a, a pretty mommy. Um, my mom was, it like in my view, and she might be listening right now, a very beautiful woman, very attractive lady, but she always dressed very modestly. You know, not frumpy, because no woman wants to be, you know, if you ask a woman like, oh, what's your style? Like, even if they are frumpy, they, they're probably not trying to be frumpy. That's not the goal. You want modest. I think modest is the word that we're looking for that maybe some women can pull off perhaps, if that's what they wish. But my mom was always very much like jeans and a nice top kind of lady, always put together, never really looked disheveled. I don't know what happened to me, but whatever. It Maybe it skips a generation. Who knows? But I know that I would certainly have been very, very embarrassed if my mom, even if I, being a girl and having girlfriends, but just having my mom pick me up and if her fucking tits were hanging out and she was wearing short ass shorts and a midriff top, um, I would have felt very uncomfortable. And especially nowadays, you got to think people who have kids that are 12 or 13 are probably in the ballpark of Gen Xers and millennials who I think, I, I could be wrong, Dan probably knows more than me, but... I think breast augmentation or just augmentation in general is a lot more popular with the Xers and the uh, millennials than it was with the boomer generation. So, and also now you see a woman who's 40, 39 compared to a woman who was, you know, 39 or 40 in the 80s or 90s, completely different looks, it seems, especially if you are a little bit attractive or you're really trying to hold on to your youth you know, you have the lip injections, the hair extensions, your bleach blonde, you got the tan, you got it. The nails can be, it's weird. Nails are a thing that like, if I had a daughter, I wouldn't, I like would feel very uncomfortable with her getting her nails like acrylics or something at a young age. I see that some moms allow that to happen. Like their eight year old daughters have got acrylic nails um, for some reason, I know it's not like a sexual thing, but like it kind of is. When I see a seven-year-old with acrylic nails that are like really long and I, I, I'm i just like, is that appropriate for a child? And it was weird because I remember I, I did see something on Instagram not too long ago where there was like the seven-year-old girl and she had, Brian Philly, $10, appreciate you, beep beep, honk honk. Again, I just don't want to, if, if Macho Man is working back there, I don't want to uh, hurt him. That's why he's asked me not to blow the horn. So that's why I'm, I'm beep beeping on my own. Um, but yeah, I saw this seven year old online and she had these like long acrylic nails. And sometimes now they're getting even more creative where they'll put like little trinkets on them. You know what I'm talking about? Like a little bow or something. It, it just like, how do you use your hand? I feel like you've completely disabled your hands, which seems to be an odd thing to do because hands are, are very uh, useful tools. But for some reason, I would feel very, if, you, if like you go and you want to get your, your nails painted, whatever, but like seeing these young girls with these long nails to me, and I'd like to hear from from the people, A1390 Bubba, why does that look so sexual to me? Like why? it? And it's not, it's just nails. Like I get it. It's not wearing a the thong bikini or anything, but it's something that like women do, like mature women do in my mind. 
Like they get their nails done and they're long and it's like, I don't know. It just like oozes like sex appeal to me and I would feel uncomfortable sending my seven-year-old to get her fucking acrylic nails done with the French tip manicure. That seems a bit much, but I'm not a parent. I don't have to worry about these things. I'd like to hear from the, the people that maybe have some experience with this. 813-90-Bubba. But um, yeah, I would find it wildly embarrassing if my mom was really trying to get a lot of sexual attention. Now, listen, if like mom likes to go out on the weekends to the club or whatever, hang out with her girlfriends and it's not on company time, she's not picking you up from the, you know, she's not picking you up from soccer practice looking like a hoe bag. She's, do, you know, but she likes to get dressed up once in a while. Fine. I don't think that should be a problem. But if she's in car line with her fucking tits out, I don't know. I don't think that that's necessarily appropriate i mean do whatever you're gonna do obviously but i i don't think that i would i would do that to my kids you don't really want to be you want this i feel like this is what you want as a mom and i'm not one so i don't know but i would assume that you want like your especially if you have like a son right you want maybe the the boys to like be like oh your mom's pretty but like you don't want to be like uh you know I, I would titty fuck your mom because I could see your nipples out of her. You know what I mean? You don't want to give them too much to work with because that is really fucking embarrassing as a kid. And trust me, like as a kid, even my parents who weren't really embarrassing and let me do my own thing, like you're just embarrassed by them. I don't know what it is. It's like at the age of 13, you just want your parents to just evaporate. I'm like, don't drop me off. Don't, don't, don't come too close. I don't want people to know like I have a mom. It's like, bitch, you can't drive. Like you're 12. Everyone's mom drops them off. Why are you so embarrassed? I can't even explain why. I'm sure not every kid was is that bad, but I just remember being like so embarrassed. And maybe it's because you're at that age where you're kind of ex- expected to have a little bit of independence and like being a big girl and like being a baby is not cool. So anytime your parents are around or helping you out, you know, you you think your peers are going to think that you're a dependent, incapable little, little baby back bitch, I guess. So you just kind of want to be that like, oh, yeah, I got freedom. I got I don't my, I don't need my parents for every little thing. But you do. You do. So I, I'm not quite sure. And I, and I know that this happens with a lot of teenagers where you just you just you're like, please just fucking evaporate. I don't want people to know you exist, even though I perfectly knew I knew perfectly well that my friends all had parents and that was fine. And I wasn't embarrassed for them or by them. But like, it's just this weird thing that I think afflicts teenagers. And then by the time you're like 17 or 18, I feel like you pretty much grow out of it. You're just like, yeah, it's my mom and whatever. It's cool again. But uh, I feel like the age of 12, 13, for some reason, it, parents just become so embarrassing. Hello, who's this? This is Jay in Alabama. Jay, what? You cut out there, friend. Jay in Alabama. Jay Alabama. in Alabama. What's up? The Anna? Yes, yeah, sir. Hi. Yeah, we're live. What's yes. going on? So, uh, no, I agree with you about the, uh, there's actually a pharmaceutical commercial um, that sort of uh, looks like it exposes young people. And uh, it's, I loop takes it. I can't remember the mm-hmm. exact name of the, the drug they're pushing. But uh, it represents these uh, young kids in swimsuits and it's sort of a water park theme. I don't know if you've seen it. And mm-hmm. it's kind of, uh, uh, well, it's, it, to me, it's a bit risque for the kids to be uh, shown, depicted like that. In a kind of sexual like, fashion like, or? It, it, well, I mean, I'm not... Uh, that way to kids, but I'm, I'm you know, people. No, I'm not are, saying that been... you are. I'm just like, no, no, you could I'm, be I'm obvious and say this kid is person. not dressed appropriately. I think that's fine to call out. You're no, not saying I, I want to fuck that kid. I, I You're just saying it, this is inappropriate. Yeah. I, the, the, the way it's depicted, it, it, it looks like it uh, has a sort of a hint of a sexual angle to it. I, I, yeah. I don't know. I just think it's disgusting that the pharmaceutical companies anyway, and then they would take that to that level it's mm-hmm. just beyond me, but. Yeah, well, I wouldn't put it past Big Pharma to do a lot of shady shit, so... Oh, no, to get their product pushed. But um, I wanted to ask you also, have you guys ever thought of using... This is why I'm calling your show as opposed to the one earlier, because I get probably get a little more talk time with you. Sure. Uh, The platform uh, that PBD uses, Manect, I thought maybe Bubba would be into the idea of making more money, and with the Manect... 
uh, it seems to be working for the, you know, Pat, uh, Patrick Bed David. My snake. P- yeah. The value team. Um, I'm not familiar yeah, with this platform, so I will investigate. And if well, I it's, think- it's called Minect, and what it is is people calling you and paying for your time. And um, it's making them seemingly loads of money on the side. Oh, so, um, okay. I thought I would share that with you. I'm, I, I, I thought you guys might have heard about it. I'm like, I have not. Maybe the boys it. have. Um, but I will definitely mm-hmm. research and investigate and report Please. back. Yeah, yeah. If there, if, because anything to help the army. Sure, you know, absolutely. Thought, well, if there's an call, untapped let me source. Call Anna, and I called you Anna one time, and I, I'm really sorry about that. Oh, my um, God. Please don't apologize. It fucking happens. So, and my name is spelled wrong, so it's not your fault, friend. It, well, it still sticks with me. I know. Head. Don't I mean, don't feel bad. Let it go. <laughs> Forgive yourself, okay? Forgive no, yourself. Hey, I, I will. And uh, hey, what about Seth doing? Uh, you know, open mics. I think he's got that it for comedy. Uh, do you see that too? For open mics, um, I could see yeah, him doing I that. Do I don't know if that's really something up. that he would want to do. Doing... No, I know, I know. But I, I'm just saying, if he wanted to, I think he could crush it. Yeah. Well, I will bring that up a to him. Bit of, you know. He's yeah, got. It. Go ahead. Yeah. No. Sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. Oh, I just think he has comedic timing from what I see on the podcast. Yeah. And uh, I think if he wanted to do open mics, he could crush it. You know, like at uh, what side sport or comedy? Um, sure, improv or, or they do it at yeah, a bunch yeah, of yeah. bars and stuff. Or even you know open mics, um, whatever. Yeah. You yeah. Know, well, I'll at, bring uh, that up to him and tell him that. Or something. Yeah, that it's time for him to start his stand-up comedy career. Yes, please. Mm-hmm. And, I will uh, do that. If Bubba could get on that Manect uh, tip because I think that too would help. Uh, he's always looking for the, you know, for the money, and uh, mm-hmm. I don't want. I know he doesn't like leaving money on the table. So no, he I does not. And who does, sir? Can you blame him? Right. No, not at all. But uh, I want to thank you. You're doing. You're crushing it um, with what you're doing. If you might, I wanted to ask you if you could ever get before he passes, um, while you have a chance. Um, to uh, get uh, the guy from oh, Dr. Clarence Bass. I know you're into health, and so am I. Clarence and Bass? Ripped, it ripped and ripped, too, even if you did like a phone-in thing. Uh, but he is very, very educational, as well as Vinnie Tortorich, NSNG, no sugar, no grain, Vinnie Tortorich. Mm. Um, I'm very wary yeah. of all these, uh, I don't want to call it a fad diet, but all these... Absolutely no grain, absolutely no sugar, absolutely no anything that's not well, paleo. No, no. He, he puts living into life and life into living uh, is his motto. You know, I don't know what that means. Know. Does that really mean anything? Um, I, I understand well, that. I, I, I uh, Again, we go down a, a, a dark, not a dark, but a very long extended rabbit hole about health and what's actually plaguing our health. And I don't think... You know, I used to just say that sugar is the devil. I, I would say that a lot. Um, I, I don't believe that to be the case anymore. I I think that oh. that's kind of, yeah, I think that that's kind of a short-sighted well, way. Inflammation and all. I, no, I it's ahead. just energy balance is what I'm learning. I am currently reading uh, Peter Atia's Outlive book right now. And I would say he's probably the, the leading doctor slash researcher slash just clinical physician um, when it comes to the game of, of longevity and health, at least the most popular, I'll say that. And Huberman, uh, Huberman, Huberman's in there. This guy, by, uh, his name online is BioLane. His name is Lane Norton. He's actually in Tampa. I used to find him very obnoxious. Uh, I, he's growing on me quite a bit. But it seems mm. like the tune that these guys are, are talking about are that these diet wars are are pretty much r- ridiculous to be having the vegan versus paleo versus carnivore versus keto versus vegan. If I already said that uh, these, all of these diet wars are, are pretty much useless and nonsensical. And what so all the things in moderation, it's just about energy balance. Yeah. Um, when you look at the right. randomized when, when human take... control trials, it, it seems that right. it doesn't really matter aside from protein. So you got to have enough protein just to kind of sustain uh, right. muscle growth, so protein synthesis, muscle, obviously. Right. But when you kind of vary with fat and carbs, it doesn't really have an effect on your... 
a little bit and it's uh, and obviously well, individuals vary like from person to person uh, but for the most yeah. part it's about how much you are consuming you know you could be a vegan well, yeah. and be obese i lived with one for two years in michigan she was a very nice lady uh, lady she was fucking my age four years young four days younger than me but her name was alicia and she was a vegan and the bitch was fat as fuck. And she's like, I don't understand. I'm a vegan. I'm like, yeah, but you ate a whole vegan pizza. She's like, so? I go, well, well candy bars, yeah, I'm like, that's like a, a lot of fucking calories, Alicia. You know, I hate to break yeah. it to you, but just because it came from a plant doesn't mean you can't overeat it. So sure, it's somebody gorgeous on it. Right. right. And it's and it's funny because like you go, well, sugar's the devil. Sugar's the devil. It's like no one is saying one donut is going to kill you. You know, if you no. go, well, just one donut, it's like, okay, well, if it was actual poison, one donut would kill you. It doesn't. It doesn't kill you. But what so then again, what does kill you is when you have a dozen donuts every fucking 12 hours. That's probably not good for your health. So everything then in moderation, then I guess. Back Essentially to- just moderation and energy balance. You really, if you want to maintain your weight, you kind of want to be taken in as much as you're burning each day. And the, and the problem is people don't know those numbers. And the reason why now like low carb, low sugar is so hot is because when you have sugar or sugary stuff, it doesn't really satiate you in the way that a well-balanced meal would. Or uh, something with a lot of fiber wood. So it's easy to overconsume. You could easily lose weight on a cookie only diet. If you had a cookie, say you had four cookies a day and they're each 250 calories. So you're you're taking in a thousand a day and you're burning maybe double of that. You will easily lose you're weight, and then you could, yeah, off. and then you could easily tell people actually cookies are healthy because they help me lose body fat. It's like, yeah. well, that's not the whole story. The story is that you just you were you were taking in less than you were burning. So you lost weight. Would I say that's the healthiest well, way to go about it? Probably not. So what do you say about then the insulin spike and the inflammation with sugar? Again, you're really only going to come into problems because here's the thing. If that sugar is energy, if you were starving and you hadn't eaten in four days, you do need a sugar spike. You do need insulin to live. Well, yes. Your, your brain needs the glycogen. You know, Correct. Glycogen. Yeah. You need the glucose. That's energy. So the the constant insulin spiking, it doesn't really matter as long as you are having a certain amount of calories per day. Because you got to think like if you're like me, I like to do intermittent fasting because it does help me maintain weight. And it's also just like more convenient for my life. I'm not saying everyone right. has to do it, but and it's an easy way for me because it's really, really hard for me to consume more than 2000 calories in like one sitting if I'm having one meal a day. Right? Like a reset for your Yeah, body. but when I do eat, I eat a shit ton. So you got to think my insulin is super spiking. Now, obviously, so it's much lower yeah. the rest of the day. I mean, not the rest of the day, but after a few hours, like I'm going into, you know, dipping lower in terms of my insulin levels, my blood sugar levels, because I sometimes don't eat for 21 hours. But when I do eat, I eat a lot where you think other people maybe have three or four small meals a day and their insulin isn't spiking as much as mine because they're not eating quite as much. Well, let me ask you this, <clears throat> Anna, when yeah. you roll, do you, uh, what do you feel yourself with? Or do you not really consume too much before like some practitioners and you know, that way you're not uh, heavy on the mat when you're rolling? Yeah. I just, I have to be really careful because there've been days like where I just shake or something. No, or I eat like a full, my biggest meal probably around 1 PM and then I don't roll till six. So I'm just pretty much fully oh. digested at that point. And then usually yeah. at night I'll have like a small snack when I come home to refuel. So but... then you're satiated throughout the, you know. Yeah, but I'm I'm not starving, but I'm also not at all hungry. Because if you have anything in your stomach and you start rolling, it, it like just yeah. leave. Just like fucking it. go home. <laughs> you're going to feel like shit. You're going to be farting on people. It's just, it's not good. Just it's not just, a go, good look, just, just go man. home. Just, um, just go the fuck home. Yeah. Do you ever use a rowing machine in your cardio? No, I've like tried. The, I hate uh, it. I really is, hate it. I've tried it. You don't like it? Mm-mm, I don't yeah. like it. I elliptical, I'll stairmaster, I'll run <clears> on a <throat> treadmill and outside. Um, I do jujitsu, which is obviously, you know, cardio intensive, but I just, I've tried rowing. I just fucking hate it. So it's like, why would I make myself do yeah, it? Yeah, it's not for everybody. If I don't like it. Do you row, sir? I feel how like about, you're um, pro about row. A rebounder? Do you use a rebounding? Uh, Unit? I don't know what that means. Uh-huh. What is that? 
It's sort of like those mini trampolines, but like the really high end three five hundred dollar ones. Uh, that I mean, if they don't have it and... at fucking LA Fitness, then no, I'm not using it. So, oh, oh, you don't yeah, have like a no. little home slide kit. No, I don't have a home gym. I don't like working out at home. I know a lot of people do. I think they're freaks. I I feel like I need to I need to be in because my house is for leisure and relaxing, and I don't really like to work there. So if I'm going to work, you know, I'd like to do it here or go to a coffee shop. Right. But when I'm at and home, I'm relaxed. Visuals at home except the television. So. Yeah, I just and I don't like I don't like working out at home. It's just not for me. I need a vibe. I need to see other people working hard because that motivates me to be like, all right, I'm I'm at the gym. Right. I'm at the place of business where we have to go do shit. Not just right. at get, home. Get your head, yeah. Yeah, yeah. or right. going on a run outside. I, I like doing that. Well, so yeah. <clears throat> well, those are things I was just curious about. But if uh, you, really you could um, make sure you ask Bubba about the Manek, I'm sure you'll look into. I'll look it. into Manek. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Patrick Bet David and Valuetainment. Right. So I I, I, I watch really them pretty regularly. You guys, I think would love it because they have competitions who can get the most you know money and yeah, the and most they're cool. all in like insurance guys, so they they know what they're doing in yeah. terms of. <clears throat> making monies, yeah. taking risks. And then Seth with the uh, comedy kicker. And the comedy kicker. Yes, stuff. sir. I have all of those things written down. And Clarence Bass, yeah, well, whoever the I, fuck I that is. I enough to uh, make your podcast a little more interesting. And, uh, maybe, you sure uh, did. Uh, you sure did. Uh, you sure did. That the people wanted to know. You know? You d- thank you, sir. I very much appreciate your input. Thank well, you. Thank you guys, too. You give me entertainment, and I'm just giving back for what you give me. So, God bless. Have a good one, sir. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. All right, I'm going to put this guy on hold. We're going to take two more calls, and then we're fucking out of here. Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Spike from Green Bay, Wisconsin. What's up, Spike from Green Bay, Wisconsin? How are you doing? Hey, good. How, are, how have you been? Well, well, I'm all right. I'm better now. I'm fine. What? What's, what, what, what's on your mind? All right, so I lived through the era. I was a senior in the year 2000 when the MILF, craze out right the milk craze being everyone now, wanted to consume as much milk as possible no milk the milf milf the, i was like what yeah, is this milk craze mom. you're talking yes yes the milk the stacy's mom has got it yeah. going up right okay i feel you go ahead and, and that was uh, everyone embraced that that and because it was almost like all the uh young teenage to 20 something guys were yeah. like Hey, cool! We can finally come out of the closet and say, "Hey, we like older women with big titties." You know, it was kind of right. a cool thing. You know, mm. and now I now I'm for, uh, 42 next week, and uh, the circle of the guys I hang with, we work out. We're single guys, uh, you know, uh, tatted up, uh, just look like uh, macho man with tattoos, kind of thing. Yeah, and uh, and now it's a crazy thing. But now you've got these 20 something girls interested in us but in that whole reverse psychology where it's this older man taboo thing and it's, uh, it's is so it a taboo because that's pretty standard like well, the mill it, thing it, is it, the it, other way around where you're like why do these young boys like these older women but i would argue that these quote older women were probably in their 20s and 30s and they still looked pretty good and pretty attractive with their Big titties, as you say. Yeah, it's, it's it's more of a sexualization, though, of rather than saying, hey, find an older man that can provide and take care of you. It's more like I'm a 21 year old girl that just wants to get dicked down by this guy because he looks like he's just blowing my back out because he's, you know, buff and tatted up or something. Oh, so you're you saying know? that these girls and, want nothing from these older guys except sex. They're not trying to yeah, extract yeah. resources Much or like the mill bear. a what a bit. What did you Much say? Like mill bear. A mill bear. No, no. Much like the milf era. M- milf era. I'm sorry, 20s, sir. Yeah, in in my twenties, we would hook up with you know, you know, forty something hot moms, and we didn't want nothing to do with them other than sex, and that's all they wanted too. So it's, it's the same well, dynamic. Well, I think at at that age, when you're a woman, you, you understand that a, a 19 or 20 year old boy really can't provide much else other than some some good dick, as you say. Um, as far as the 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 women who just want to get, uh, as you said, blown their back out by these older guys, I feel like 
that might be misinformed. I, f- I feel like these women don't just want that. I feel like they're probably trying to settle into your life a little more than, than you might imagine. Because if they really wanted to get dick down, they'd, they'd probably be sticking around guys in, the, in their 20s and early 30s. But if they're looking for a bit more security, a bit more maturity, um, someone to take care of them, that's when I think that their, their sights might be set on someone that was a bit older than they are. But maybe I'm well, fucking wrong. Yeah, I guess yeah. <laughs> the 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 uh, the poll of the crowd that I've heard is the younger women say the younger men can't uh, give them what they want physically in the in the bedroom. And the dynamic, what whore the bags are you fucking rolling around with that a 25 year old man can't give her the business? So she's got to go after these. Did you say you're like 42? I don't know if you said that you had a dad bod or if you're fat. You said you were very tatted up. Um, can you describe it? You said you're you're buffed out. Is that what you said? You're you're pretty jacked. Are you a handsome feller or? Uh, yeah, I'm a good looking guy and I work out all the time. Okay, yeah. so you're just a good looking guy who works out all the time. So they're just attracted to you because you're hot, I guess. You know, because in my mind, you were like fat with a beer gut and these girls are going after you. But if you're just attractive, then yeah. And, and, and the, in the same way that, <clears throat> or sorry, in the opposite way that men typically lose attraction for women as they get older, it, the opposite is, is true for women. Where we kind of maybe like the gray hair and we kind of like the more esteemed look with a few more wrinkles. You know, you you look more esteemed, you look more secure, um, you secure financially with resources and just assertive. You know what you want in life, mature, a good leader, like all of those things women are very much attracted to. So I don't think that it's, you know, not the standard, but it seems. Oh, no, to, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, what women have always been attracted to. <laughs> it's interesting that now the the hot mom dynamic is frowned upon twenty years later, but then kind of this this hot dad dynamic is a thing. I don't think and, it's frowned uh, upon. I think it's just because our society's moved so far away of any sort of modesty where you have moms who are part of the PTA, but they also have OnlyFans, which you know, do whatever you want, but that's probably going to embarrass your kid if your mom is sucking dick on on an app, you know, doing videos like that. So I don't think it's uh, frowned upon. I think being attractive at any age is always uh, great. Being in good shape at any age is, is always phenomenal. Um, but it's just more the way that it's being put on display by women these days, where it's like it's so in it's your a, face. Here's yeah. Here's a question for you. <laughs> If if the hot mom with the titties out and the the, the Daisy Duke shorts and uh, the blowout hair and she just looks way too hot around the high school teenage friends of, of a kid, right? Yeah. What what would you say on the flip side is the dynamic that's too much that a teenage girl would say, Dad, you need to tone it down because my friends are digging you. Um, like if your dad was really putting it out there, well, because men are usually the pursuers, you'd probably be like, dad, could you stop trying to fuck all my friends? Could you stop trying to flirt with all of my friends? Cause usually you'd probably be hard pressed to find a 14 or 15 year old girl who was, unless she herself had some serious daddy issues, she's probably not going to be flirting with anyone's dad. She's probably not. She may if she like I said, if she has daddy issues, but if she doesn't, she's probably not going to put it out there. And also, even if she was putting it on that guy, that guy's the adult and needs to not engage with her because he's the adult in this situation. So, yeah, um, that's a different dynamic. Yeah, right. Because men men are more of the pursuers of sex. Right. No, behind closed doors, the teenage girls are saying, wow, your dad. I would this, that, and that. Um, I'm trying to think. That's that's usually like not really how girls that age talk to each other. I used to be that age, and I was certainly I would have been again. Maybe I'm the weirdo, but I would have been embarrassed to be like, "Oh wow, Kiana, your dad's like a fucking babe." Like I don't know. I I wouldn't talk like that. I understand that teenage boys do. 
You know, they're they're very focused on those things. They're really horny. They got a, a lot of testosterone pumping through their veins. But women, young girls, teenage girls, again, in the circles that I ran around, we're typically not talking about how hot each other's dads were unless maybe you didn't have one and you were kind of looking for one. But I, I grew up in a community of, you know, nice, wholesome, well-rounded Christian girls and with Christian fucking values. And we just had solid parents, solid family units. We were in dance, cheer, band, whatever. Um, so we were just kind of on the straight and narrow. But again, I wasn't really rolling around in the circles where dad wasn't around. You know, none of my friends dressed scandalously. None of my friends. We we weren't slutty. We always abided by the rules of the dress code of the school. So um, I, I don't know what kind of fantasy you're concocting in your mind, sir, but typically that's not the case. Where you have a 12-year-old oh, no. girl throwing it out there for a 38-year-old man. No, yeah, I was just saying. Uh, I was just saying that if there's a parallel of the mill, what's the that is too much? The dilf. Too, too, yeah, what's the parallel of that where it's like, hey, dad, don't be running around with the tank top with your biceps popping while my friends are around or something like that, you know? Yeah, I, w- I would say there's really not that that much men typically are a bit more conservative i mean if he's running around in a speedo i'd probably say that might be an equivalent but men typically are more modest by nature because even if you just look at a, like evening attire for men and women even if they're not even trying to be slutty like look at the, i went to a wedding not too long ago what are most of the men in a suit a long sleeve shirt slacks what are the women in uh, a dress maybe above their knees sleeveless uh you know it just women wear less clothes typically so it's hard for a guy to really put it out there unless he's really trying so yeah if my dad was running around in a fucking speedo around my friends even if he wasn't hot even or he was i would be embarrassed either way same with my mom i feel like it'd be it's the same it might even be worse if your mom is gross and she's got her titties out because then they're, everyone's like, ew, your mom's gross and her titties are out. I don't know which would be worse, if people trying to fuck my mom because she was hot or just make fun of her because she's gross, you know? So Yeah, I get it. No, that, I was just curious if that was, uh, you know, it just uh, a theory. I don't really but, think uh, that there's an equivalent there and, unless no, your no. dad is being really scandalous with, with his balls out and yeah. budgie smugglers. Yeah, which is interesting. So that Yeah, it is interesting. More- Ladies look for the the qualities of the man rather than the physical, in a sense, right? You know, that's kind of a... Yes, men and women are not equivalent in that way. We have different desires, different interests. There are things that matter to both, of course. Like, looks matter more to men, but that doesn't mean that women are completely oblivious to them. It's a lot easier to persuade a woman to have sex with you because you've got money or a good personality or you're funny and make her laugh. If I try to do any of those things and I'm gross, hypothetically, it's going to be really hard. I've never heard a man say, you know, she's not that cute, but she makes me laugh and she's got a great personality, so I wiped her up. It, men don't really talk mm-hmm. like that. You know, it's like you got to be just attracted to her, first of all. And then after that, the other characteristics come into play, you know. Is she nurturing? Is she uh, submissive? Is she, a, would she be a good mother? Is she kind? Is she generous? Is she, does she bring me peace? Like all the things that men care about aren't necessarily the same things that women are looking for, which are security, right. leadership. Is he assertive? Um, can he take care of me? Will he provision and provide for me? Those sorts of things are what women, so it's right. not a, pure equivalent because we have our sights set on different things in a mate right right yeah hey would you uh (laughs) would you date a guy that got um innocent for murder would you do that probably not probably not i got a i'll make a quick story i was hanging with this girl quickly go uh, ahead in her in her 30s and she said that, you know, she was on the outs with this guy that she was seeing. Yeah. Okay, cool. Whatever. You know, it's kind of like the trading plan. Okay, so you want to start hanging with me now. Good enough. And then uh, one day she calls me, and then she's on the phone with me for like an hour and a half, which is very, very unusual. Yeah. 
And, and she's like, well, do you think we could ever become something more serious? And I said, well, you know, you probably got to tie up loose ends with this other dude, right? You know, I'm like, I, I know you still talk to him, and he's kind of upset about the, this breakup you're having. No, you don't have to worry about him anymore. Uh, okay, whatever that means. Uh, so then all of a sudden I get a call from a detective like a few days later, and he's calling and saying, hey, can you confirm that you were on the phone with her during these times? Did she ever get off the phone with you? Anything weird like that? Did she not talk to you for a while on the phone? I said, no. He goes, okay, well, uh, uh, you know, her boyfriend was found dead. And <gasps> she was driving by his house when she was on the phone with you. And I'm like, oh, damn, okay. Uh, you know, good enough on that. But uh, she never got convicted enough, and they ended up saying that it was a uh, suicide. But uh it was uh, one of those weird things. So yeah, I'd probably err on the side of caution. That's just that's just me. I'm not saying it's the right or wrong thing to do. I'm just saying if anyone was involved in a crime, even if they showed up innocent, I would just be like, ah, maybe not for me. There's right. plenty of people that have never been on a murder trial. Why can't I go for one of them? That's what I would think. But thank you very much, Spike, for calling in. Appreciate ya. Yep. Have a great weekend. All right, everyone. That is a wrap on that. Another almost two-hour show. Thank you to the people who have contributed. Oh, come on, man. Where are you? Come here. Give it to me. The mouse was running away. Oh, come on. Hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you out. Mike Thurman. Thank you so much for your contribution. Where are the others? I don't know where I can find them. Uh, oh. I don't know, folks. Brian from Philly, Xerxes, Maria Guatemala. I'm just doing this from memory, everyone. Is there anyone I missed? Please call it out. I appreciate all of you. Fat Pig, I think he maybe donated. I know he called in. Thank you for the documentary um, suggestions. Spike, Fast Racing, 1999. I've been given a green light to blow the horn. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Oh, shit. Here it is. I got it on. Brian from Philly, Xerces 69, Maria Guatemala, Bright Farms, John Island. Didn't want to miss you. I'm so sorry. Mike Thurman with several contributions. Spike Fast Racing. I found it. We're good to go. Have a great weekend, everybody. Please be safe. I want to hear and see from you next week. Two Live Jew is going up. And make sure if you are in town... You got to come hang out at the Kenny Chesney concert on 420. I think we'll be there around 4 or 5 p.m. It will be the Cash Cube debut. You're not going to want to miss it. All right. I love you guys and God bless.